Hello everybody, I want to do a really quick video on reading micrometers and calipers. Uh, there are handouts in the first day handouts folder on my website that you can print out for uh, instructions on how to read micrometers and calipers. But those are these are common tools that we use in the machine shop. We actually use it in this class. Of the two, the micrometer is more accurate than a caliper. And when I say more accurate, is most micrometers today can read to the fourth place decimal. Calipers can read to the three place decimal. So depending on what your tolerance limit is or your mount that you're working to, uh, can depend on which tool you need to choose. Uh, most of the time, the calipers are gonna work fine. They work fine in our classroom for the type of tolerances that we're holding. When we're dealing in thousands of an inch, we're dealing with the third place decimal. So in order to understand when we're saying things like uh, 5 thousandths, 10 thousandths, 25 thousandths, it's written like this. This is 1 thousandths of an inch, 20 thousandths of an inch, 36 thousandths of an inch. Sometimes you'll say, hear us um, abbreviate that. We'll say, take another 5 thou. That means 5 thousandths of an inch. But whatever number we say, it needs to end in the third place after the decimal point. So in other words, one thousandth of an inch needs to have two zeros put in front of it so that it lands in the third place. Twenty thousandths needs a zero in front of it. Thirty-six needs a zero in front of it. Four hundred thousandths can be written as four hundred thousandths and end in the third place because this is our precision of one thousandths. Now, micrometers being more accurate, um, reading them is fairly simple, but micrometers come in a range, meaning that all micrometers, the inch micrometers that we're using, come in one inch increments. So this micrometer here is a zero to one. It can measure from nothing to one inch. If I wanna get something to read larger, for instance, this one here is a three to four inch. It still has one inch of travel, but it begins at three inches and then it can measure all the way out to four inches. So you'll need a whole set of micrometers, whereas on the caliper, the caliper can span multiple inches in itself. So let's talk about reading the micrometer really quick. Reading the micrometer, I'm going to grab a zero to one micrometer here. Um, there's a couple of components that you need to be aware of. First off, there's this little lock right here. This micrometer should turn very, very freely. If it doesn't, it could be that this lock is on, so you want to make sure it's disengaged. Holding a micrometer, these are like right-handed tools. You want to put your pinky and your ring finger underneath what's called the spindle and the anvil so that you can operate the micrometer. A quick way to open the micrometer is roll it down your forearm. A quick way to close it is roll it up your forearm. I wanna open it up enough that I can clean the surfaces because it doesn't take much of a debris to throw these micrometers off. These are very precision pieces of equipment and they need to be treated as such. When you're taking a reading on a part, you also wanna make sure that the surfaces that you're reading are also free of chips, debris, and also burrs, right? Those are the little standing pieces of metal that might be on there. You'll take your micrometer and you gently place it over your part, and you wanna make sure that when you apply pressure for the measurement, you don't squeeze down. These are not clamps, so you don't squeeze down at all. You barely touch the surfaces. As a matter of fact, most micrometers today have this little friction band up here that allows you to put the proper tension on the micrometer so this is actually has a pre-tension, we'll call it like a torque wrench, and some of them have a little ratchet in that click. But this gives me exactly the, the pressure that I need, and once I have that, I can then turn the micrometer sideways and take my reading. Reading a micrometer is very simple. You look up at the board here. You have a breakdown on the scale. You have this static scale on the sleeve here. Each one of the whole numbers stands for 100 thousandths. They are subdivided into four 25,000 increments. So when we're taking a reading for the micrometer, we take this static scale in combination with the scale that's on the thimble, and that will give us our singular thousands. One revolution of the thimble is equal to 25,000. So each time we read the micrometer, we're reading to the very left edge of this thimble. Look at this example here of 400 thousands that's being measured the left edge of that thimble would be right over the four, and the zero on the, on the thimble would line up with the zero on the sleeve, and that would give us a perfect 400 thousandths. All too often, though, you're gonna see something where the micrometer is kind of in between things, and you just need to do the simple mathematics in order to determine what the micrometer is reading. Look at this example here. 
I'm going to count my largest values first. So I see 200,000 showing, but I don't see the 300. So I just write down my 0.2 and carry the zeros out to the third place. I have one tick mark here, 25,000 tick mark. So I'm going to take that as 25,000, write it out, get that five to the third place by adding a zero in front of it. And then on the thimble portion of it, I have 12,000 lining up. And sometimes it could be off by just a, a hair or two. It's in between the 12 and the 13 or the 11 and the 12. In this case, we're rounding to the third place decimal. So I would put the 12,000 getting that two to the third place by adding a zero in front of it. Then you just simply add them up vertically, bring down your decimal point, and this value reads 0.237. Micrometers can read to the fourth place decimal. We're not going to cover that in depth, but the fourth place decimal scale is here. And typically what you would do is you would read it to whatever closest uh, number it came to. You wouldn't round up, you would round down, and then you would go to the side scale here and see which one of these lines lined up perfectly with one of the lines on this scale. And that value that was on the side scale gets transferred over as your fourth place digit. On a caliper, Calipers, as I said before, can span multiple inches. But besides that, calipers can also measure differently than micrometers. The micrometers that we're using here are called OD micrometers. That means they measure outside dimensions. I need a different style of micrometer to measure the inside of something. I need a different style of micrometer to measure the depth of something. With calipers, I can measure all of those things with just one simple tool. With this caliper, I can measure the OD with this part of the caliper here. I can measure the ID, the inside the, uh, dimension of this hole, using the little ears on top here, and by pulling gently outward. With the caliper on this end here, this extension is for measuring depth. I actually have a small shoulder inside this part, and I'm gonna place that depth gauge inside, and then just gently bring the caliper down to the face, and I've measured the depth. And there's even a fourth way to measure the depth, and that is using the face of the caliper here, the end of it, and then the end of the moving jaw here, which are ground flat. And I have this shoulder on the outside of the part that I'm going to place the caliper on and then come in this way and read the caliper like so. Reading the caliper is very, very simple. It's just like reading the micrometer. You have how many inches are showing, in this example here, I have one inch showing. I don't see the two inch mark, so I write my one inch, bring my zeros out. Each one of these is equal to 100 thousandths. That's one revolution of this dial, and I can see that there's eight of them showing. That's 800 thousandths, so I put that point 800, get it out to the third place. And then finally, I read directly off the dial. The dial's on 57, so I get that seven to the third place, and I add these up vertically, and I have 1.857. And that's as simple as it is. On your quiz, you will get a picture of a caliper and a picture of a micrometer. And you will need to read the fine print to see what size micrometer you're working with, whether it's a zero to one, or one to two, three to four, or so on. And you will need to determine what that value reads as one of your test questions. And the same thing with your, micro, uh, your caliper. You wanna make sure that you read how many inches are showing and then figure out the rest of it by counting out the hundreds and then the single thousands. So that's a, just a quick brief lesson on micrometers and calipers. And remember again, you can also refer back to the first day handouts and print out the instructions on how to read micrometers and calipers as well.